Okay, G. Uh, uh, this is a picture uh, we took in 2018, I guess. Uh, uh, we were in Eastern Salt Range. Uh, uh, we have Bhaganwala Formation and um, across the Chowa Saida Shah Road, we have Tobra Formation exposed there. Um, I presented this picture in um, APG, uh, 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 favorite outcrop uh, party as well on the AAPG uh, platform. So the reason uh, to display this picture to you is the, to uh, show you the Tobra facies. So uh, uh, there are uh, three types of facies in Tobra formation. Um, one is stilitic, uh, the second one is marine, and the third one is uh, uh, dynamic tactic type or mixed type uh, facies. So uh, this is basically uh, the definition of uh, facie that we sometimes we normally uh, are loosely, we use this term in the industry uh, that must be changed, but overall the literature is full of this uh, term facie. Um, there are litho facie, there are uh, electro facies, there are a number of terms you will be looking in the modern sciences. Um, uh, are in the modern reservoir geology or petroleum geology. So uh, if I ask you a question that uh, we have Cambrian formation and on top of it, we have Permian formation. Basically, we have some formations are missing over here. Uh, and that accommodates for around 200 million years uh, time span. So what could be the possible reason behind this uh, missing sequence? Uh, this is the simple uh, assignment for you. Uh, you need to get some evidences of uh, this uh, missing sequence. OK? Sir, uh, sir, uh, it is actually the unconfirmity. Yes, yes okay. it, that's the, the, this is unconfirmity. But the question is, we have 200 million years missing. Uh, and when we move towards uh, northern areas, we have these uh, 200 million years. Uh, there are different formation whose ages are uh, uh, directly in line with these ages. Uh, so what could be the possible reason behind this? Okay, just, that's a, just a general question. So we have to Tobra formation and you know Tobra is a reservoir Yes, sir. Uh, in which field? Uh, sir, we don't know the field that where is, uh, it, is, it is a reservoir, but uh, we know that Tobra formation. It's in Adi field, Adi field, Kheoda Tobra. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, who is this guy? Abdullah? Uh, who is speaking? Who was speaking right now? Uh, Okay. Yes. That was all Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, Tobra is a, a reservoir in Adi field. Kevra is a reservoir in Adi field. Uh, and uh, they are, uh, these aren't the uh, the most prolific reservoirs of Upper Indus Basin. But uh, you need to work on the reservoir quality uh, or uh, mineralogy of these. Uh, reservoirs and you know that uh, the paleogeographic mapping of the Tobra formation is also required. Uh, then the conglomerates type, their um, interconnectivity, and there are so many aspects uh, where you can uh, work on uh, uh, on your uh, in your MS thesis. So please, uh, the purpose of this subject uh, is is one of the course. Uh, purpose to just tell you some of the gray areas uh, where students don't bother to go and they they don't come up uh, with something new uh, with the novel approach in their research. Uh, what they do is just uh, copy and pay, paste the, the, these uh, theses of their seniors uh, uh, and ultimately there is no uh, advantage of doing so. 
because uh, if you if there is no novelty in your research then you can't publish your work in any of the reputed journal so um, it's a request to you guys that at least uh, uh, do some literature review then come up with something new and in this subject you will get so many things so many aspects of the um, uh, geosciences where you can work and uh, uh, obviously uh, we are here to help you as well if you need any kind of literature any on any topic um, you can just text me or just send me an email i'll send it to you okay uh, okay ji uh, let's move next now uh, we have reservoir types we already discussed um, the reservoir types that majorly we have silicic elastic reservoirs and carbonate reservoirs below you have uh, two thin sections and uh, what it looks like uh, which one is of silicic elastic and which one is of carbonate reservoir do you have any idea anyone please sir a silicic elastic and b carbonate uh please uh, speak a little bit louder sir a1 is silicic elastic and b1 is carbonate sir okay anyone else i think they both are carbonate both are carbonates okay anyone else sir to me b is a carbonate sir both are i think both are silicic elastic um uh, okay um uh, let's move uh, further um uh, the, the the first indication uh, for me uh, in a a section uh, is a porosity this is a thin section okay the thin section uh, indicates that this um, a uh, the thin section in the figure a has a high porosity and it shows like a, a voggy porosity uh, as compared to the uh, b reservoir so uh, normally this is not a set uh, certain criteria but normally uh, you will find the porosity in uh, sandstone or silicic clastic reservoir like this and this kind of porosity in a carbonate reservoir uh, this is uh, uh, this is a thin section and uh, what they do in order to get the porosity of the of the reservoir in order to highlight the porosity uh, they uh, use epoxy uh, fluid uh, blue resin yeah, blue epoxy just to highlight the pore spaces of the uh, rock okay so this is this is blue epoxy nothing else just to highlight the pore spaces so uh, this is carbonate and this is a silicic plastic reservoir a sandstone and uh, this is quartz so um but could be the integrated approach uh, to get the idea about the reservoir quality prediction for sandstone and carbonate uh, this slide is all about the integrated approach to know about the reservoir quality of sandstone and carbonates we have some pre drill in primary data acquisition then standard studies and then some of the advanced are special studies required uh, for prediction of reservoir quality uh, pre drill in primary data acquisition means the available data of surrounding fields surrounding wells before commencement of pre drilling okay you can use the viral wireline logs of the nearby wells mud logging of the near uh, by wells drilling data of the nearby wells near by, by fields uh, seismic analysis or if you have the seismic survey done in the uh, the block uh, in analog studies means 
uh, from different area uh, uh, if you have some uh, particular similarities between your area and uh, the, the, the area uh, that is far away from your study then you can use that and uh, that area as an analog for your studies as well then uh, status studies mean sample acquisition um, it means it uh, includes drilling core description uh, core analysis and basically core analysis uh, divided into routine core analysis and then special core analysis okay we already talked much on uh, uh, routine core analysis and special core analysis then the petrography of the selected samples from core uh, then we can also go towards some uh, specialized studies mean isotope study mineralogy and geochemistry and fluid inclusion studies as well so all these studies are essential in order to predict the quality of the reservoir so uh, what do you mean by reservoir quality uh, well, some of the prime parameters of uh, uh, predicting reservoir quality are uh, porosity permeability capillary pressure um, uh, water saturation obviously if we have these parameters we can easily find the hydrocarbon saturation. So uh, core, uh, it's a direct uh, measurement and the different logs or well logs or well logging or petrophysics uh, uh, sometimes accommodates for the uh, indirect methodologies to compute these reservoir properties. So um, reservoir quality means um, uh, um, some of the parameters are porosity, permeability, water saturation, etc. But what is the role of clay? Uh, okay, uh, clay. Uh, what kind of uh, pore spaces are there? What is the uh, uh, mineralogy of those uh, clays? Uh, obviously, we will use some uh, special uh, techniques for this. Um, same XRD, XRD, EDX. Um, uh, uh, and uh, uh, obviously it has impact on the diagenesis of the uh, reservoir as well. So ultimately, uh, by combining all these results, we can predict the quality of the reservoirs. The reservoir I have shown you earlier um, of Tobra formation. Uh, if that reservoir is under your investigation, then you would be looking for the mineralogy, uh, provenance of the sandstone, uh, then uh, conglomerates are there. Obviously, you need to look uh, carefully uh, the relation of matrix, either it's a class coated, either it's a matrix coated reservoir, and then look for the uh, clay minerals. So ultimately, the clay mineralogy would be sufficient to tell you the reservoir quality of this reservoir. Obviously, it's not a, a very prolific reservoir, as I said earlier, um, like Kevda and Tobra, uh, but um, they are giving us some production in the, uh, the field. Okay, and uh, these are also the uh, um, uh, Cambrian and Permian reservoirs, so they are deep enough. Uh, that's why we need to look uh, the deep reservoirs in upper Indus Basin as well. But what we have done uh, in the initial stages of our exploration, we have uh, exploited the shallow reservoirs uh, by just ignoring the deep reservoirs at that time. And what could be the uh, impact of this shallow uh, uh, drilling, uh, on the pressure of uh, overall pressure of the area, uh, you might be getting some insight by Dr. Berges Shami in petroleum geology. So that is not our subject to discuss. Then we have different classification schemes for siliciclastic reservoir rocks. Um, if you have lab analysis or uh, um, uh, some of the uh, framework mineralogy of any reservoir, then you can use number of classifications are available, like uh, darts classification, uh, uh, 
we have uh, Patty John, uh, Siever, uh, uh, and different cross plots. Uh, you can just punch your data on these uh, 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 ternary diagrams, and you can come up with the uh, with so many uh, uh, useful information about the reservoir. Okay. Uh, then in uh, silicic elastic sandstone, uh, the frame work grains would be quartz mostly. Mostly, uh, it is dominated. Then it is followed by feldspar. Then there are some rock fragments, heavy minerals, micas, clastic carbonates, uh, gloconite. Uh, uh, if you go to field and if you find uh, phyllosilicates. Uh, green color uh, sandstone. Um, obviously, that is uh, the indication of gluconite uh, uh, that shows sometimes a reducing environment as well. Uh, some of the uh, white spaces in the sandstone, um, and there are some uh, fillers or cements like quartz, quartz veins, chert, silica, hematite, etc. They, uh, they are the uh, fillers uh, of those fractures as well. Then uh, provenance uh, by by just getting the idea about framework grains um, or their proportion in one uh, reservoir, you can ultimately yield the provenance uh, means the source area of that reservoir uh, mineralogy textural maturity, depositional environment, and diagenesis as well. So um, anyone has idea about the provenance of Tobra sandstone? What is the source of the uh, Tobra sandstone? Anyone? Sir, so I think deep marine environment. No, it's not an uh, environment of deposition. It's about uh, uh, the source. Glacier? Yes, glaciers. Glacier fluvial. Yes, sir, glaciers. Sir, bus, uh, pause me that one. Pause me that one. 8.30 that one. Yes, please. Sir, glacier bolo, sir. Okay, okay. Uh, glacier fluvial um, uh, artillites, okay. But the provenance means uh, 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 we can, uh, if we model, if we try to model the uh, mineralogy or the textural maturity of the uh, Tobra reservoir, then obviously it would take us to the uh, origin of Tobra as uh, 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 from Craton, uh, Craton interior. Uh, maybe we can link this uh, sedimentation with the Aravali ranges uh, as well. Okay, uh, so the deposition from the south. Uh, um, what are different kinds of sandstone and what about their occurrences? Um, it's uh, Quartz erinites, lithic erinites, felspathic sandstone, and grey uh, These are some of the uh, different kinds of sandstone. Uh, conglomerates, uh, some of intraformational, some of the extraformational conglomerates are there. Intraformational uh, within the formation, uh, they are less abundant. Extraformational are uh, mostly they are abundant. Uh, uh, ortho Conglomerates have matrix less than 15%. Para conglomerates, they have matrix about more than 15%. Uh, para conglomerates are polymectic. Uh, they are also uh, indicated by uh, Tobra, sandstone, fasces. Okay, you just need to have some idea about these things. Then we have shales. Um, whenever we talk about the reservoirs uh, we closely account these shales or clays uh, obviously they have impact on the uh, overall reservoir uh, uh, 
reservoir quality. Uh, clays plays, uh, play an important role. Uh, uh, and shale, obviously, you know, the, uh, that constitutes the clay, like uh, more than 40 to 60% clay. Then it has quartz, it has feldspar, some of the uh, uh, rock fragments, you know, it's carbonaceous material. Uh, and it, if it's of red color, then uh, it's, uh, it would be, could be hematite, um, iron, uh, or if it's a black color, then it has more carbonaceous material. So um, you must have idea about what is clay, uh, silt, malt, sheet, uh, everything you oh, must know about uh, the silicic elastic reservoirs. So the most uh, important part of today's lecture is clay minerals and their importance. Okay. Sir, I have a question. Okay, please. Uh, what is the difference between clay and shale and what are their uh, de defining criteria in the field? How we, we can differentiate uh, on the field that rather it is a shale or clay? Um, clay uh, shale is uh, uh, obviously the uh, criteria is uh, dependent upon the gain size. Okay. Uh, if we a simple criteria would be between clay and silt uh, is uh, the, there will be no gritty feelings uh, uh, when would, when you uh, when you just uh, just get the grains of the uh, uh, of of clay or silt the, the, the gritty feelings would be in silt and the uh, if there is no gritty feeling then uh, this is a clay. Uh, uh, obviously, it depends upon the uh, uh, either it's a sand size, either it's a clay uh, size, either it's a silt size. So the size of the grain matters. Okay. Uh, then in uh, shales, the most important property is uh, cleavage, partings are the uh, layers okay uh, because they are from mica family so ultimately uh, it depends upon uh, the abundance of the mica uh, that uh, uh, they can partly distribute it into layers so what about the structure of the clays uh, clays uh, uh, the, the different types of clays like kaolinite, um, like illite, like uh, smectite, they have their own structural types. Um, and uh, um, sometimes we use the term that uh, mixed illite or smectite clays. So they have different type of uh, uh, bonding. They have different type of structure. And according to that structure, they exhibit different type of uh, information. And Sorry, they are, uh, silicate minerals, obviously. Uh, mostly they are phyllosilicates, uh, sheet silicates. And they tend to be uh, uh, found in a very fine particles. Uh, and they are uh, order of few microns to fractions of the microns. Sir, is depth uh, is concerning with the, their differentiation? Uh, rather, clay is uh, formed at uh, depth, high depth, or shale is formed at? So, uh, if you are linking it with the uh, quality of the reservoir, then obviously, yes, there, uh, uh, it plays an important role with respect to depth while accommodating for the uh, reservoir uh, quality. What happens at, at the depth? Uh, uh, the, uh, uh, there is a transformation of illite to smectite. From that transformation, we can get information about the clay mineralogy of the reservoir. That's why I said that today's uh, the, the most important part of the today's lecture is the clay minerals and their importance. 
So uh, let's uh, go through these five or four uh, points that indication of tectonic sand sedimentation. The clay minerals can be used as the uh, indices for tectonic sand sedimentation as well. They can be used as the indicator of hydrocarbon generation and expulsion. And they have a significance uh, um, for reservoir quality prediction. Then they can uh, be used for the emplacement or chronology of the petroleum emplacement. Means uh, they can give you the idea about uh, um, age, okay, by using the uh, argon uh, 39 to argon 40 dating. Then uh, the clays are important for the petrophysical properties study. Uh, uh, this should be the uh, subject of a petrophysical uh, uh, interpretation that. Uh, if you can uh, identify different type of clays in your reservoir, then how you can change your petrophysical parameters to adjust and to compensate for the impact of the clays. Okay, so if we uh, go into the detail of the uh, structure of the clays, like uh, uh, they have uh, octahedral. Uh, sheets, they have uh, uh, two layer case of uh, their structure, tetrahedral, uh, and then they have uh, three layer, uh, three layer arrangement. Uh, so, kaolinite, illite, smectite, these are some of the major types that we accommodate for the reservoir quality. If we have a illite in the reservoir, Obviously, that reduces the uh, reservoir quality of the rock because uh, that clay has a bridging effect. And uh, that bridging uh, impact means it is going to reduce the porosity and permeability of the reservoir. Okay. So oh, we will be having uh, uh, some discussion. Uh, with the passage of time on the clays and uh, what would be the significance of clays and how we can change our interpretation of uh, petrophysics if we consider the uh, clay mineralogy. In normal cases, if you don't take into the account uh,